Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September the 9th, 2020. Let's talk about Canelo's complaint against Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya, and the Zone. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now the complaint is online. It's available at Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D, right? And it's an eye-opener. Canelo is seeking $280 million plus, plus punitive damages. Now let me just preface my comments here. You know, I enjoy and admire Golden Boy Promotions. It's head. Oscar De La Hoya has been great for the sport of boxing as a boxer and as a promoter. Moreover, his fighters seem to get paid more than most. For example, Canelo made $15 million for fighting Rocky Fielding, right? That's in the complaint. Oscar De La Hoya also is visible in trying to publicly support his fighters. So you'll notice after fights, Oscar hops in the ring, win, lose, or draw. He hops in the ring, he's by his fighter, he's making sure his fighter's okay. If there's something odd that happened in the fight, Oscar will mention it when interviewed. Uh, he doesn't hog the camera. He lets his fighters talk. You know it's Oscar because, of course, he's a Hall of Fame boxer, etc. Even when a fighter is ungrateful and he has a young guy, not, not Canelo, but someone else who's been bad-mouthing him to reporters, De La Hoya tries to publicly take the high road. Now I understand De La Hoya has had his problems with Dana White. Okay, fair enough. But Oscar is a guy who is really a role model in the sport of boxing. That's my take. That's my bias. Let me also add to that COVID-19 caught many by surprise. Right? Understand, crowds in many areas, the fight fans who fund the sport, who show up to fights, who comprise the live game, in many areas, they weren't allowed to do so. Right? Understand, too, COVID has a financial part to it. A lot of jobs were lost. There's a lot of transition. There were a lot of people prioritizing feeding their families paying their mortgages or monthly rents. That leaves less money to pay for pay-per-view fights or cable subscriptions. Now, according to the complaint filed by Canelo and a Nevada corporation, which I'm assuming is Canelo's corporate arm, and contrary to reports, Right, understand, there's what's reported in the press, then there's the actual reality, the legal reality that memorializes the relationships between the parties. According to the complaint, Canelo does not have a contract with DAZN. Right, he didn't sign a contract with DAZN that said you are to get 300 odd million dollars. I know they reported it that way because, well, reporters are caught up in the moment. Reporters are dealing with incomplete information. They're hearing from people involved in the deal who might have differing agendas. Just understand, the Zone signed a contract with Golden Boy Promoters. 
right? Promotions. <laughs> Golden Boy Promotions. It did not sign a contract with Saul Alvarez. Let me also talk about how this deal was structured. It's a shocker. According to the complaint, which does not attach a contract to it. Right? It's a federal complaint. I don't know if the allegations are true or not, but according to the complaint, Oscar De La Hoya personally guaranteed Golden Boy Promotions liability to Saul Alvarez. Understand too, that the deal between the zone and Golden Boy Promotions is not one that Saul Alvarez has seen. He has not been provided with a copy of the agreement. Folks, welcome to boxing. Some of the rooms have shadows in the corners. Right? I know the press reported this as a huge deal between the zone and Canelo. Well, understand, Canelo hasn't seen the actual written contract between the Zone and Golden Boy Promotions. Now, that's the big hole in the complaint. Contracts give parties to the contracts contractual rights. Right? They list the terms and conditions of the relationship. Canelo is speculating about the terms and conditions listed in the Zone's agreement with Golden Boy Promotions. Let's also talk about where he's at risk, and it's a substantial risk. You know, as Rich Dad's Robert Kiyosaki, who has a series of excellent videos here online, as he points out, you know, rich people, many of them, often don't own a lot legally. Right? Oscar De La Hoya, individually, might have his assets in a family trust. He might have his assets in his wife's name, in his children's name, in a real estate development that kicks off cash flow, but that on paper, as far as Uncle Sam is concerned, doesn't have a lot of equity. Right? There's a part of the law designed to shield your assets. Now, incredibly, the way this deal was structured, Canelo has left himself at risk because if Golden Boy Promotions can't pay him and he goes after Oscar De La Hoya for the $280 million, he might find that even though Oscar's family might have $280 million. Much of it is unreachable by him. Let's talk about Golden Boy's assets. Now keep in mind, Canelo says he's owed $280 million under his contract with Golden Boy. Right, but that's money that's not sitting around in a vault someplace. That's money that was supposed to be created in the future from Canelo's fights. Well, the rest of Golden Boy's assets might be framed in the same way. They might consist of advances to fighters, money that's supposed to happen down the road based on TV deals or cable subscription deals. If Golden Boy Promotions were to have to pay 
a $280 million judgment. And if a jury finds them liable for punitive damages. Well, understand many of the fighters they have contracts with might try to bolt. If Golden Boy declares bankruptcy and ends up in bankruptcy court, and if, as is standard practice in the sport of boxing, its contracts with fighters are assignable to third parties. In other words, someone else can step in and say, hey, I'll buy the contract of that fighter. You might have a bankruptcy trustee who sells off Golden Boy Promotions assets for pennies on the dollar. Right? Any prospect under the Golden Boy banner that shows any, pro uh, any promise, some other person in the sport of boxing, some other promoter, might say, hey, you know what, let me buy that contract. So the assets of some of these boxing promotion companies are somewhat illusory. Right? Take the promise here to pay Canelo $280 million. We're finding out that the zone wanted to lower the $40 million they were paying periodically to Golden Boy Promotions. We're also finding out that the contract, and again, this is speculation from a plaintiff, Saul Alvarez, who has not seen the contract between the zone and Golden Boy, right? But what we do know, based on this complaint, is that that contract actually involved more fighters than Saul Alvarez, right? The money wasn't all going to Saul. The zone would pay $40 million, and apparently... 35 or 36 million of that was supposed to go to Saul Alvarez. He gets 15 million off the Rocky Fielding fight. He fights Danny Jacobs, he gets paid. He fights Kovalev, he gets paid. Here's where you end up with a little bit of controversy. It was his understanding, based on his agreement with Golden Boy Promotions, which is a separate and distinct contract from the zone's agreement with Golden Boy. Right? It was his understanding that as long as he fought someone world class, right? Someone the caliber of a Danny Jacobs or a Sergei Kovalev, that he was honoring the contract. But there was pressure from the zone to have him fight a third fight against Gennady Golovkin. Canelo did not believe that he was contractually obligated to fight Golovkin, especially since he's fighting others who had titles. Well, now Canelo suspects that Golden Boy Promotions made promises to the zone about Canelo's future fights and did not share that information with him. So he's seeking fraud claims. He's seeking punitive damages, which you only get if there's egregious, willful misconduct. Now let's talk about what could go wrong. Right? There's a lot that could go wrong here for Canelo. He hasn't seen the deal between the zone and Golden Boy. So he doesn't even know whether the deal has, and this is for the law school crowd here, a liquidated damages provision. Right? Understand. What a liquidated damages provision does 
is it puts a cap on the contractual damages. If I have a deal with you, but I want an out, just in case something unforeseen happens, right? And in the business world, a lot can happen. The stock crashes. A partner has a liquidity crisis and needs to pull his investment, right? You're not generating the revenue you thought. Your subscription service is not catching on, right? Shrewd negotiators will have a liquidated damages provision. So what that does is it allows you to say, you know what, I'm going to exercise my rights under this liquidated damages provision to pay the agreed upon sum to terminate this contract. Because Canelo has never seen the DAZN Golden Boy contract, he doesn't know if it contains a liquidated damages provision. Understand, he's suing DAZN for breach of contract as a third-party beneficiary, as someone who was supposed to benefit from the contract. The contract was supposedly put together with Canelo in mind. But Golden Boy is a huge organization with a lot of fighters. Who knows how the contract's worded? If the zone was shrewd, they could have gone out of their way to name people other than Canelo in the agreement or not name him at all. Make it look like Golden Boy has some degree of discretion in terms of who they present, but state a criteria in the contract where the person who Golden Boy presents for a fight card would have to be a champ recognized by a major sanctioning body, etc. Right? Just understand that Canelo because he's not a party, because he's not a signatory to that contract between the zone and Golden Boy, had to sue as a third party beneficiary. Let me say this too. According to the contract after COVID 19 hit, the zone said, hey, we need to cut the money we're paying you. Right, the zone wanted a break from Golden Boy. Now understand that request, if it's coupled with a liquidated damages provision in the contract, is a request that has leverage. In other words, the contracting party is saying, look, I can terminate this deal unless I get a break. Are you going to give me one? Here again, Canelo hasn't seen the deal. He doesn't know what it says. It could even have a force majeure clause. A, you know, imp contractual impossibility clause that allows the zone to back away from the agreement if a pandemic breaks out. Right? The parties may have thought this through and realized, you know what, our ability to pay this money is a function of the ability of fans to actually show up for the event. The ability of people to sign up for our subscription service. If there is a global pandemic or an earthquake, some catastrophe, that prevents that from happening. Sometimes the parties put in the agreement that either party upon such an occurrence has the right to terminate the deal. Right here again, Canelo doesn't know what's in the contract between the zone and Golden Boy Promotions. 
Let me say, too, that his real claims, contrary to what's being reported, are actually against Golden Boy. Right? Golden Boy is his promotional representative. Let's say that contract with the zone says we want Canelo to fight Gennady Golovkin. Well, understand, if Oscar De La Hoya's promotional group doesn't tell that to Canelo until after it signs Canelo to its promotional deal, well, that's Golden Boy's problem. Not the zone's problem. So the fraud claims in the complaint are against Golden Boy. They're not against the zone. Right? So let me just say this really is a catastrophe. It's really going to put a strain, perhaps break, many of the relationships out there. The Zone has an agreement with Glovkin. Right? Who knows? Maybe it's structured like this. Maybe the Zone has an agreement with Golovkin's promoters. <laughs> right? And Golovkin has a contract with his promoters. Maybe that's how they structured it for risk avoidance. A Canelo-Golovkin third fight might not happen now that Canelo has sued the zone. Right? The parties might decide to simply terminate any contractual relationship that they have. Since Golovkin is with the zone, the bad blood might lead to Canelo not fighting Golovkin a third time. You get the feeling, too, that Canelo doesn't want to fight Golovkin a third time. So if his relationship with Golden Boy falls apart, that fight isn't going to happen. Canelo would have no contractual obligation to fight Golovkin. Also, for years, I've been here online talking about how there's no real money in boxing. Obviously, we're talking about millions of dollars here, right? But my point to you is just understand, as successful as Golden Boy has been, they don't have the money in a vault to give Canelo, right? The broadcasting service, The Zone doesn't have the money in a vault to give Canelo. They actually have to adhere to market conditions. Things like pandemics dry up their income source. Also, what kind of business is boxing? It's one where a fighter believes that he's going to get more than $360 million from the zone. And even though he's one of the biggest names in the sport, his promotional company does not show him the contract. He claims he asked for it. He hasn't received it. So let's talk about a worst case for Canelo. Right, a worst case would be The zone saying we have the right to terminate this contract. Right? Read provision five. Even a third party beneficiary would be bound by the wording of the agreement. So let's say the zone is immunized from liability. Is Canelo going to bankrupt Golden Boy? 
knowing that Golden Boy's assets are really its investments in fighters like Virgil Ortiz? Is Canelo going to force Golden Boy into bankruptcy? Knowing the impact that would have on Golden Boy's stable of fighters and realizing that in bankruptcy, whether it's a liquidation or a reorganization, it's unlikely that Canelo would get his $280 million. Let's say Canelo goes after Oscar De La Hoya, who may or may not have guaranteed the performance of Golden Boy promotions, right? He might find that Oscar, while a successful boxer, while a successful promoter, might not have $280 million to give him even if he has the assets. The assets might be in other people's names. Right? It might be in hard to quantify, hard to value private companies that Oscar owns. So this is a mess. I hope everyone comes to their senses Right? Let's hope that the world returns to normal soon so that fights can take place, live crowds can show up without social distancing so you can get 15 to 20,000 people in the arena. And let's hope that viewers are able to afford and want to buy the zone and want to watch future Canelo fights. But understand, that rosy-eyed hope is just a hope. COVID-19 might linger. Government might be slow to allow public events to take place. Understand that Mike Tyson-Roy Jones fight was supposed to take place this month. It's been postponed. Right? Might not happen now for a few months. Canelo might find that the market has materially changed. That he can't get $35, $36 million per fight. That no one's willing to pay him even $15 million to fight Rocky Fielding. Right? Canelo is 30. Understand, too, when a lawsuit like this gets filed, it changes many lives. There might be some fighters out there who are very happy with Golden Boy promotions, whose contract might be expiring soon. And then they hear about this lawsuit. They talk with their legal advisors, and they hear about the risk that Golden Boy might be on the hook for $280 million plus punitive damages. And a lot of fighters are going to say, you know, I'm going to sign with another promoter or I'm going to do what Mikey Garcia is doing. I have enough of a name where I'll promote myself so that when I enter into a deal with the media outlet, it's with them directly. I can look at their financial statements. If they're a publicly held company, I can look at their public records, their investor materials to see their financial fitness rather than rely on Golden Boy Promotions or some middleman promotional company. So keep an eye on this, but just understand that in the world of boxing where Canelo is a king, They did not show him. He still hasn't seen it. The contract between the zone and his own promoter for his fights. Right? There's something in boxing called a Muhammad Ali Act. Right? Fighters are supposed to be kept in the loop. 
if you believe the allegations of Canelo's complaint, he was not. He doesn't even know if his promoter promised the zone that he would fight Golovkin a third time. That's the state of boxing in 2020. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.